Okay. Wow. Okay. <laughs> How's that? Is that better? Yeah, that's better. Okay. So this project, um, let's let's sort of start with a little bit of a case study first. Um, how many people in this room have worked in a team environment on building a website? Okay, and of the rest of you, um, how many of you feel like you might work in a team environment sometime in the near future? All right, great. Um, so the team environment is very different from working on a site on your own. First of all, when you work on something on your own, you are responsible for the version control and you do it however you please, right? But when you have a big team, all of a sudden uh, version control becomes a really big issue. First of all, you have to do it because person A can overwrite person B's stuff or person C can accidentally use Drush in the wrong way and kill all the modules. We had that happen. <laughs> um, so, so you never know what's going to happen. Um, the other thing that, that comes up in a team environment is you really have to, whether or not your personal opinion of wireframes is positive or negative, you have to, on some level, whether or not it's actually wireframes, have a real sense of a site plan that everyone can look at. Um, and to be honest, I'm not going to sit here and say that we had a very good site plan going into this because we as a team didn't entirely know what we wanted out of the site from day one. Um, we did have maybe three or four different sets of wireframes at various times throughout the project that pretty much got thrown out the minute they were made. Um, or if they didn't get thrown out, they weren't brought to the next meeting. Um, <laughs> and so it's, and you know, I, I've done project management on some really big team projects like Stand Up to Cancer, where there were probably about 30 people working on the site. Um, and there was a lot of very, um, very intense work going on on many levels. And in those cases, the wire, you know, you're very strict about the wireframes. You really follow through. But we were in a much more organic situation um, with a bunch of volunteers. And some of those volunteers are actually in this room. Most of them are, all of you are sitting up here. Uh, so in the uh, middle up there, we have Mike Stewart, who's going to talk a little bit during this about Git. Um, coming in the room, we have Chris Stefano, who can also talk about the system administration aspect of the project. Um, then we also, right here in the front, we have two people who have actually been with this project from the very beginning, which I think was October 2009. And um, a along with, so in October 2009, Benno, Sebastian, um, invited me, a few other people, Tommy, Ashok, um, and I don't even remember really who else, but you two were at that first meeting. Mike, were you at that first meeting? Not the first one. No, okay. Um, and, and we met and we started talking about, well, what do we want? Why do we want a site in addition to um, groups.drupal.org? Why, why do we want something else? What are we going to do? We started talking about all this stuff and we talked and we talked and we talked and we talked for months. And it was really good because we really got to know each other and we learned a lot from each other. I've, you know, I, I've built over 20 Drupal sites, um, maybe even more than that. I, I don't even know. I've lost count. But still, as all of you I'm sure know, there are a million extremely valuable modules that I never knew about until getting involved in this project. And for me, every single one of those meetings was very rewarding, but it was always kind of a rediscovering process. And a big part of that was because we were all volunteers. We all had very little time. And we were all of very different skill levels. Um, and I think that's probably a really key thing to, to recognize. Um, I kind of put myself in the position of project manager just because somebody needed to be in that position and nobody really wanted to be. Um, so, so I just kind of went ahead and, and did it. but. Um, but I didn't want to leave anyone out. So when I recognized that somebody was a very beginning skill level, 
I didn't necessarily take the time to say, okay, well, that person's very beginner. Let's try to figure out something else for them to do. Instead, I said, oh, well, you might like learning how to build views. And that wasn't necessarily the right approach. So I would say that was probably the very first um, learning experience for us in working with a team of varying skill levels. That That's a very important thing to think about. Think about what your team members are good at, not just what they want to know. I was approaching it from, well, what do you want to know? And then putting people into those categories. But find out what they're actually good at so that um, I now have a brand new puppy and I'm learning how to train the puppy. And um, the woman who's been kind enough to help me with that, the first thing that she told me was, always set your puppy up to succeed. And that makes perfect, perfect sense. And, and I think that as the project manager on this project, I didn't necessarily think from that approach. I just thought, well, what do you want to learn? Okay, do that. As opposed to, where will you excel and keep this project moving forward? Um, and so I think that's probably a, a really important thing. Um, so I would say from, from sort of a case study perspective, really figuring out where people are going to excel no matter what their skill level, even if they're brand new, there's somewhere, there is truly somewhere everybody can excel. So find out what that is um, early on, right away, rather than waiting until, you know, you start in October rather than waiting until April <laughs> to figure that out. Um, and then the other thing that, that I would say is um, take your wireframes seriously. If they're wireframes or if they're sketches on napkins or whatever they are, don't keep throwing them away. Pick something and focus on it as a team. And then once you have something that you can all sort of be proud of, then you can start improving it. And that's really where we are with this project. At a certain point, we decided, you know what? We have all these amazing plans, which we do. Um, the site has a lot of fantastic functionality on it. You can um, find videos, you can upload videos, you can give feedback, you can suggest presentations, you can vote for the presentations you want to see, um, you can read book reviews, There's, you can find out about other community members. There's a lot of great functionality on here. But it's not the dream that we had. We had this amazing dream. And so at a certain point, we finally said, you know what? We just got to put something up. Let's just get it out there and start improving it. And I sort of feel that we probably should have made that decision not in July of 2010, but in February of 2010. And then we could have gone ahead because we had a lot of this um, in some form or another. We rebuilt it, I think, what? three, four times. <laughs> um, but we did have something like this in February of 2010. We just held on to it because we wanted it to be perfect. And I think that's also an important, this is a volunteer situation. So don't let perfection kind of kill you. And I think that's what happens in a lot of projects. Obviously, if this were, you know, a multi-million dollar site for a multi-million dollar client, you're not quite going to say, well, this, there's error messages on this page, but oh well. But think of what you're doing the site for, and then as a team, make the decisions that are going to keep the team feeling proud and moving forward, as opposed to the ones that are going to leave you feeling stuck. Um, I would say those are the biggest lessons, and that's really where I wanted to start, because for me, that was really the most important thing to, to learn. Um, also, working with this, uh, I mean, I suggest any chance you get to work with a volunteer group on a project, do, because I think I've met some of the most amazing people working on this project and, um, and learn their way of doing things, and it's just fantastic. Um, so that's the lead-in that I want to give. Um, what I'd like to do, I, I'd like both Tommy and Ashok to give a little bit of your experience and something that you learned from kind of a case study perspective. And then I'd like Mike and Chris Stefano to talk a little bit about how to use Git um, and the setup and the systems administration lessons learned using Git and how to actually set it up to work so that you can actually work on this site. Because whether or not you're going to work on this project with us, um, which we'd love, but whether or not you're actually going to work on this with us, um, understanding that um, workflow of pulling a, a project from this repository will be really valuable. Um, 
And then I'd really like to leave it open for some, some Q&A. Um, so that, that's how I'd like to, to do this. Um, please jump in at any point. Um, Tommy, let's start with you, give you a little bit of time. And, um, and then Ashok, and then we can let you guys come up. Well, I don't have a whole lot of stuff planned to say, but one thing that I know um, that if you're working in a group situation like this with volunteer people, one thing that we came across was there was people coming in and out of the project all the time. There was maybe three or four of us that were kind of always there, but at every meeting we had, there was a half a dozen or more people that showed up, but they might only have shown up for one meeting. And so if we tasked them with something at that meeting and they started working on it, they probably didn't follow up if they weren't coming again. So those of us who were with the project from the beginning and planned to consistently stay, you just have to be ready to pick up slack and manage each step and always know what the end goals are going to be because if somebody was working on something but then has to stop working on it, you need, you need to be able to jump in and fill that gap when, when it empties again. And I feel like we did it fairly well most of the time. Um, there were a few things that I know went by the wayside until the very end until we realized that, oh, this wasn't getting done. But um, if you end up being somebody who is managing a group of other people, in this kind of situation, it's, it's, it's a good idea to keep in mind to have a plan that at least the list of things that you have to get done and who was working on it, who could be a, like a, a backup person to work on it if they need to be. But we had a good group of people who picked up a lot of slack all the time. Um, what else can I say about this? Personally, I think it was one of the best experiences I've had with Drupal so far because of all the people that I got to work with on it because they all knew much more than I did so I learned a lot but I feel like I was also able to contribute with what I knew how to do they had a need for so I learned and I contributed at the same time which I feel like this is what the community is about so I'm grateful for that um, I don't know what else can I talk about um, initially, I started working on the book review section, um, figuring out what should go into it and what we want to do with it. We actually have much more plans for it than exist now, but it, right now it's good. It does what it needs to do. Yeah. And like I was saying, we had to pick up where some people dropped off. I ended up working a lot on the the videos and the video and slide archive and the presentation um, display and what's the other part of that? Um, Presentations meetings. And the, and the events, yeah. how all three of those things come together. I kind of had to move into that area because the person who was doing all the video stuff kind of got busy and couldn't help anymore and then and then we realized how much this other, these other pieces were integrated into it so I kind of just took those on too because it all fit together so well and that's how we ended up getting it all done I just started dedicating time to that instead because the other the book review part was actually kind of easy yeah. and because that was the one that I knew I started out with that because I could build a content type and I could figure out what has to go there and then do it and get it done and I had done my part but then I stepped up and was able to help do the slightly more complicated stuff that I don't know if I would have done it from the outset because I wasn't confident enough, but I got enough confidence to do it. During the course of doing that, what were some modules that you kind of fell in love with that you hadn't known about previously? Well, that's hard if to any. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah. elements of modules that you didn't know about that you started making use of? Um, oh, okay. All of the, the node relationship stuff that you can do in views to make things reference each other when you need to show a list of something that um, I'm trying to, what's the best example to talk about this? I guess it's the events and the presentations. They should both reference each other because <clears throat> an event can have many presentations at it, but that presentation is always presented at an event. And so you have to be able to have those two references update each other if you update it on one node. So there's 
I think node relationships is one of the modules that, that I used for doing that. I'm not sure if that's one we actually used on the site. It might have been CNR. What does that stand for? Corresponding node. Corresponding yeah. node, node references. Um, those are the ones that if you update the the reference on one of the nodes that references each other, it automatically updates it on the other one so that they're always pointing right back at each other. So it keeps everything nice and and referency. So <laughs> but it it I took a little while for me to figure out how it all worked and then but once it clicked, that's how we had to make this work and it was great. Um, I think that's the biggest component of that. But I, I had never really used any of the media stuff. And so using what is that that group of stuff called embedded media fields? Embedded, yeah. yeah, they I figure out how to work all that. Um, and what else? I don't know. It was this one was part, so much part of a, a big section that there was a lot of back and forth about what we were actually going to end up having. Like, I guess the content types changed a lot as I was doing this. So you have to make sure that the fields you planned on having are actually the ones that ended up needing to be in there to make it all work. So the whole the whole time it was evolving as I was doing it, but it worked out I think in the end. Um, and it continues to. Yeah, and it will <laughs> and it will continue to evolve. Yeah, there's there's actually no no end on this at least not yet. This is this is a step one of what we plan. Yeah, and so I think that's part of the reason why we're having this yeah. talk is so we can get feedback from the community initially to see mm -hmm. what people might want to see in the future also. Mm -hmm. um, anything else I can talk about? Or should I turn it over to Ashok? So, I'm not entirely sure where to start on this either. I think I did, where did I start? I think I initially started with helping one of the other um, helpers, Benno, in bringing his server up to speed to try and do some of the development work. And then when that wasn't working out, I offered one of the servers we had, uh, I had through CalArts, to uh, try and do development work. And when that didn't work out, Cristofano really stepped in and brought on a super beefy server. And we both pretty much started maintaining it together. And in that perspective, it's been quite interesting for me. I've learned some new things along the way on that. And that whenever I, I primarily come as a systems programmer background where I maintain websites all through a console. And starting to use virtual mint to try and manage all of these sites that we are running on the server. And LA Drupal is not the only site that's running on the server. The Drupal campsite, the old Drupal campsite, our code repository, all of these different components are all running on the server. And we, didn't, and we needed a way to be able to manage all of this. And this is something that I've typically done by hand, you know, going into the server and writing all this stuff out. And, you know, I got introduced to virtual min, which... Uh, hmm? We've got Jabber on the server. Oh, yeah. Yes. And open nature. Sorry. And what? Open nature. And open nature. Yeah. Yeah. Our internal internet. Mm -hmm. Yes. So there's so many different things running, and virtual min was a big component in helping us manage all of the stuff that's running on there. And I wouldn't have really known about it or maybe even used it if I hadn't run across it through Cristofano. And in addition to all of that, I also really like doing server optimization work. And this project has been a fantastic opportunity for me to really grow in that part because we, we're running some really cool technology on the server as well, such as using memcached. And this is using memcached across a huge number of sites that we have. And we're also using Varnish to be able to power what anonymous users would see on our site. So these are things that I hadn't worked with before and I was itching to, and I finally got a chance to. So, you know, it, it's personal growth for me and, you know, whatever I learned from it, the site benefits from it as well, along with the people that are viewing it. So that's what I see as being a lot of fun. And I also did a little bit of work 
in on the front side where I worked with events primarily and more specifically pulling in feeds of the different uh, <laughs> yes though I don't know if photos are now pulled in directly via Twitter or if it's uh, oh, yeah. they're coming, Twitter they're coming in by Flickr oh, oh sorry Flickr yes. photos just came in today. no they're not they're not? No. They're photos. that should be updating we won't talk about the fact that it didn't update <laughs> <laughs> um, but you also have feeds on nah. so if we go to uh, two different types of feeds that um, I had the chance to work on were the primary feeds that are coming in from GDO I'm not entirely sure if they're working correctly, and I think that's something I need to go in and fix at this point. But it will be working. <laughs> and the other part is in a user profile. So whenever someone sets up a new profile, they have the opportunity to set up a feed along with it. So a new user can look at what kind of postings they have, and if someone really likes it, they can also flag that feed um, that they say they really like it. So when, a con when one of the site administrators goes uh, and logs in, they might see that, oh, a lot of people have flagged the interest in, in this feed. And then we could promote it to be part of the main set of feeds that are shown on, on the site. And I just tried one right now. I, I don't know if I can. Do you mind if I log in? We're currently using the feed API module, primarily because initially when we started development on this project, uh, we were looking at uh, pulling in a, a Flickr feed and grabbing all the images that are on there and putting it into a particular particular content type. But feeds was not ready for that yet. They were still and are still creating the various pluggable engines to be able to pull all of that content in. Um, it's getting closer and closer, and I would prefer using that. And we might even move towards using that down the line once we can figure out a good upgrade path What's for what we have. Are, are you using the dev version? Pardon? The dev version? Of feeds? Feed API. Uh, the stable version, which works. And um, in either case, uh, that's how we're powering the feeds at the moment. Now. The flagging that Ashok mentioned is using the flag module, um, which is a great module that if you're also using triggers and actions combined with flags, you can make use of flags to do all kinds of things on your website. It's definitely something worth playing with. Yes. And this is just, uh, this is my user page, and I just added a blog feed to my profile. And I don't have an actual blog, I just have a Twitter feed at the moment, but that's really my blog. So if I clicked on what feed items I have, it starts showing all of them on here. And so then if I went back, as, as another registered user, you would be able to see, I like this blog. Or as an admin, pardon? <laughs> uh, because I'm an admin. <laughs> I'm not going to abuse it, but uh, yeah, it's possible. <laughs> Show, yes. Actually, click it because we should don't, show don't, everyone what flag does. It's kind of neat. So when I click it. Now, yeah. I'm like this. Before. Yes. <laughs> we might want to change. So the I words. think I'm going to decide. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to decide that I don't like my blog anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the part that I had worked on. We don't have a view for that yet, but we'll we'll have a, the admins will have a view to say, oh, here's how many people like this. Um, also, Ashok is setting it up, or maybe you already set it up with Oliver, that um, once it reaches a certain number, it'll actually email the admins to let us know that a blog has reached a certain number. Um, that's using triggers and actions, and one of the reasons why it's a fantastic module uh, or set of modules. And um, you also have feature this blog on there, which is. Um, which is actually only available to site admins. So you couldn't actually go in and feature somebody's blog, but we could go in and feature somebody's blog once it reaches a certain number. And um, I would really like to give a really big thanks to Oliver, who's sitting and kind of hiding in the back over there, <laughs> who uh, uh, we both worked on 
this part of the implementation together. And I don't think either one of us could have solved it without each other because we were, you know, we, we, we both had ideas on it and we weren't completely sure on how to put it all together. But then he came up with something and then we just started rolling with it and yeah, it, I think it's, it's a pretty awesome feature. That we, um, uh, the user blogs and being able to flag them and eventually post them as you know, part of our official blog postings. And I think that's it for me. Sysadmining with Cristofano, <laughs> performance stuff. Yeah, uh, let's talk about so, some of the performance stuff and then go like, segue into other. Yeah, yeah. we have, um, we have about I'm 20 minutes left. I'm after this, so we yeah. can take our time. Oh, oh okay. no, 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 we don't want to take your time. <laughs> but um, but considering that, we definitely want to make sure to give people a little bit of a, an insight into how we're using Git and give people time for a Q&A. Okay. Cool. So is Ron here? No. Uh, Ron Golan and I set up the Git stuff. Actually, he, he really spearheaded that when the subversion repository we had completely fell apart. The one thing that I really don't like about Subversion in general is that it, well, by default, it likes to operate through Apache. So it's generally a bad thing to run on a production site anyway, because it bogs down Apache and adds, adds overhead. So what happened was we were getting this wonderful error in Subversion, and we weren't able to commit our code. We, 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 without being able to commit our code, we couldn't do any development on the site. And the error was completely unhelpful and the only Google results that we found were in Eastern European languages. So we did the Google Translate and we found out, yeah, people have also had this problem, but they couldn't solve it either. <laughs> so basically translated to error, giant whale, error. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we, uh, so we said, well, you know, I'm tired of working with this problem, so let's use Git. And people were like, yeah, sure. And then once we made the decision, we had to figure out how to do it. <laughs> so that's where Ron came in. Uh, we set that up. Uh, basically, we're using um, the same type of centralized uh, version control system workflow that, that we were before with Subversion. We have a master repository on the site. And whenever we want to, actually, we have several repositories. We have one for the Drupal Camp site. We have one for the ladrupal.org site. We have one just for administrators so that we can administrate who has access to the other repositories using a, a tool called Gitosis. I highly recommend it. Basically, it's just the same, the same kind of workflow as, as you might have with other version control systems, even though Git is inherently a distributed version control system. Yes? Um, I'd like to just interrupt and ask, how many of you have not started using a version control system yet? Okay. So, um, are you familiar with SVN and, and Git and what they are, or is this new to you? So we're, we're using uh, Git in a very similar way as we would be using Subversion. Um, it's the, both of them are version control systems that allow, um, how to describe this, that, <laughs> that yeah. allow you to have um, your code in a location on a server and then your team members can always check out the newest version of the code and check, um, and then they can um, commit their changes to the code. And you're setting it up in a way that archives a, um, a sort of a log of all the changes mm -hmm. and pro um, protects you from overwriting each other's code. So you can actually work on the same files to some degree. Um, or yeah. the same the same code without um, overwriting each other's work, and always knowing you know if your team member is in New York and, and you're in LA, um, you might need um, you might need to be working together, and you might need whatever they've done right away, and it enables you to actually have that as opposed to waiting for them to send you whatever their newest stuff is. And ultimately, just to add to that. Even if you are a one-person team, you know, you're running your own, uh, you're freelancing by yourself, and you have all of this code that you're writing by yourself, it's still extremely worthwhile to get used to using a code repository. Mm -hmm. And a scenario that I, I like to paint is, 
you set up the site, it's working beautifully on your computer, and you run a bad command, and you wipe out your site. If you don't have a code repository, well, you have to kind of rewrite everything all over again, or you have to find a way to recover your hard drive and all the bad file, all the files that you removed on it. Alternatively, you could use a versioning system, and you can say, you know, return these files back to the state they were in, and you know, you're back to where you were at before. So you might have lost a little bit of data just because you might not have saved it to the code repository, but you haven't lost everything. And similarly, let's say you made a mistake in a file and your, and your site suddenly stops working. You have this code repository that you can roll back your changes to a state where it was working. And then you can try and figure out, what did I do wrong? And how can I fix it from that point? So one person or many people get with a version control system. Conversely, even if you're working by yourself, it's good to try to think about setting up a subversion environment. I had a situation where I hired an individual to help me with a theme. And um, somewhere during the process of working on the theme, this individual accidentally deleted his files, all of them, the entire folder gone, which meant all his work was gone. And we, this, was, this was really what told me wait, there has to be a way to do version control. And <laughs> got me into using version control. Because um, that, that kind of thing is, is, can be devastating. <laughs> so you know, don't, don't let that happen to you before you start using it, even on projects that you're working on by yourself. <laughs> Definitely. I, can, I, can I add to that? I, I would, you, you suggested some version. I, I would suggest, oh, yeah. uh, I would suggest either Git or Bizarre. Mm -hmm. They're just easier to set up. And we're going to go into great detail on this. In about 15 minutes, there's going to be a virtual control systems, birds of a feather. And if you have any questions that, I mean, we're not going to be able, even if we talked about it for the next 15 minutes, we're not going to be able to cover the, the, the questions that you may have. So please come come to the, uh, there's there's a new room that we, we just were given today. Um, I don't know where it is, so just follow me and we'll find it. Um, Will there yeah. be boxing gloves and helmets? There, there better be. But I'd like to move back to, uh, we've gotten kind of like a little, little off topic. I just wanted to show, in the beginning, we set up Subversion so that every single person on the team could have a Subversion account, and they also got an email address. Um, the, uh, yeah, so this is VirtualMin, the tool that Ashok mentioned earlier. This is what, uh, what I tend to use on 9 out of 10 of our sites. And it just let us very easily through a GUI interface and also alternatively through the command line just get people up to speed, get them access to the code, people could check it out, immediately start working on it. That went pretty well actually for a couple of months and then that weird 503 service unavailable, like that's the most generic error in the world and we just couldn't, we couldn't figure it out. So we, we switched over to Git. So this is what we were using and So we, we did have an LA Drupal repository, and we realized when the camp was coming up, we're, as a group, we're not going back to SVN. We're, we're not going back. So what we use now, what we use now is actually a, a, a very, very simple, but very professional, very accountable workflow for deploying our code. And the one other thing I wanted to say was that we also have uh, virtual men backing stuff up all the time. We have hour, hourly database snapshots, and this just happens because I just set it up. Um, we are running out of space to do this, so if you're signing up for Dropbox, please use our referral link and help us get a little bit extra space for each and each new person that signs up. That is on our set. Uh, wrong. Anybody not have Dropbox? Where is it? Here. Yes, you all need it. Yeah, so we have it under uh, donations, sponsorships, and referrals, and this page will grow as time goes on. Um, here's the referral link for signing up for Dropbox. This really would help us a lot. That means we can keep backups for more than just the last week or so. I'd and like to have... Too, if you use a referral link, you'll get the... Yeah, it gives us yeah. space, too. Oh, that's right. It goes both ways. It goes both ways. Yeah. It does. Yeah. 
So you're going to get the to mm-hmm. Oh, I, I know that, that we would, but it, but it happens the other, other way, too. Yeah, it goes both ways. There we go. Yeah. Um, that, that's wonderful. Yeah, it is. So I've done, I've done my little pitch. Uh, basically, the server administration has been... Um, it's been really easy. It, uh, aside from this, the uh, singular problems that we've had with uh, with that problem with SVN, uh, things have been pretty straightforward. And this is one of the reasons that I didn't want to be project managing. It's because I enjoyed being in my little department where um, we didn't have to wait for people mm-hmm. to deliver something or uh, the, the the server does what we tell it to do. And per- personally, that's I like that. And so that's that. That's where my my domain has been for this for this whole overarching process, and also for DrupalCampLA.com. Um, there isn't a whole lot else that I I, I want to add. Is there any? Um, well, I I think jump we might want to jump into questions. And... I was going to ask you to jump on the intro. Yeah. Jump on, that's a good idea. I want to show basically how do you get involved. Right. And so specifically. Uh, Hollywood Drupal, node 996. <laughs> so while he's, huh? <laughs> um, so while he's pulling this up, um, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm logging into the internet. You, I would be logged if you go to it. I should be logged in. Okay. And there's my password. Now I have to change. It's been recorded, hasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, you are logged in. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I should, I should have just listened. <laughs> Um, so, so before he goes into this, um, in terms of getting involved in the project, um, one thing that we should probably do sometime in the next week or two is record a video for everybody who's going to be involved in how to set up SVN, or not, sorry, not SVN, ah, how to set up Git on your system and, and pull down the files so that when you start working on the project, you don't have to wait for somebody to help you. You can actually use the video and do each of those steps. Um, yeah. So I was going to say, that's why I wanted to get a note in there. Yeah, well, there, is, there are instructions here as well. So if you join in on the project, um, the first thing that Node, Node 996. Hollywood the, the, uh, that name doesn't actually matter. So it's just Node. Put, put Node. Oh, Node. Yeah, Node yeah. That's important. Um, so, um, so when you when you get involved, the first thing that happens is you give me your your name and email address, and then um, or somebody, and then usually me, and then I put you into the internet, and now you have access to all of this information that actually tells you how to set everything up, and then Cristofano makes sure that you have Git access and all of that. So, so this gives you all the info, and it's it's a lot to read. Um, so I think a video would also be nice just to. Yeah, this is actually the old. Page. There's a newer page with with more recent information, but uh, most of this information is relevant. For example, the, the commands to to get the code. Um, but yeah, like Rain said, just if you'd like to get involved, talk with Rain. She'll get your name and phone number or email address, and and and. And there's a lot to do I, yet. There's a whole lot. To I was gonna do. say I just wanted to show everybody this because this is the get. We'll go back up a little bit. Uh, just like my tongue. Sorry, I, I, I'm missing my fingertip. It's hard to use a trackpad. Um, I just wanted to make everybody aware that the workflow is actually really simple. I mean, the whole concept of Git can be really scary, but if you go back and show them just the actual steps, I mean, there's, there's yeah. four things you do. Sorry. Um, you, you do. You do. You go out and you get the code once. You set up your environment. You know, that's normal Drupal environment at that point. Yeah. And then you know, you you have to set up. Oops, I guess we don't do it. Git ignore whatever data makes sense. So yeah, we actually do Git ignore some stuff like the files directory. We don't put the files directory in, in version control. We don't want to track that kind of stuff. Um, some Drupal sites might want to if they do, if they launch and then they never change, and only admins can upload stuff to the files directory. But um, we don't want to do that. I wanted to show, um, yes. One of the ways that we are deploying the changes is really simple. This internet, by the way, is using OpenAtrium pretty much out of the box. Um, OpenAtrium is pretty easy to set up and pretty easy to get some kind of a project management environment out of the box. Um, okay, go ahead. Okay, so this is actually the dev site, not our live site. But here we can just type in the command pull 
That's, yes. a, that's a git command right there. They're so there uh, this is analogous to SVN update or CVS update. Which and means get the most recent code. Yeah. And, bring it in. and it just pulls it in. And, um, and this is just that's it. Uses what module to... This is called the script module. And you wrote it, didn't you? Or did oh, no. Oh, I wrote the okay. script, but I didn't write the module oh, okay. that runs the script. So, so there it, it updated. This is the unique code that you know. Just it, it shows us the exact version that we have on the site. So now the dev site is updated the most recent version. Yep. Yes. Yep. Um, and so it, it's it's just this is we try to make things as easy as possible. And uh, after we actually are done launching the site, we're going to have a little more stringent uh workflows for deploying the code instead of just letting anybody do a git pull well we already do actually when we when we sent the site live we did change every team member's um status on the site changed initially everybody oh, was right. site admin um but now only the the core four or five people who've been with from the very beginning are still site admins and then the other people are content admins yes that's a really good point. I'd like to show, do you show the rules already? Uh, no, I haven't shown them. We should leave some QA time, uh, which is only about eight minutes. I, I, I wanted to throw out one other idea. Um, you, you touched on it. But in doing this kind of a site, uh, at a user group site, uh, you get a chance to learn a lot about Drupal in ways mm -hmm. that you wouldn't expect. Uh, it's actually very similar to how I learned Drupal. I put up a website for my neighborhood organization. One of the nicest things about it is you get real users using it, but it's not a mission critical application. So if something goes down, you get to learn from it. And you get to learn it on uh, any time. You could go to roles, just go to or people that you have available. Roles, and that shows just all the various roles. As opposed to a client who's screaming at you. Um, the nice thing about this is with a whole bunch of people doing it, uh, is we all learn with each other. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I missed the very beginning of the session. I apologize again for being late. Um, Actually, I apologize for the first time, and I apologize again. Mm -hmm. um, this was designed, in my mind at least, uh, as an educational exercise to see who can work together, who can learn with one another, who can have fun, who can learn new tools, who can share what they know with other people. It was all about sharing and improving as a group. And professionally, uh, a lot of the people that have been involved in this project have learned skills that they can now take and apply it to client projects or their own personal projects, and in that in that regard, I think this has been a tremendous success. Let's uh, let's open up to Q and A because we only have five minutes left, and that's a lot less time than I wanted to give. So you had a question early on. You were raising your hand, and, I, and we never called yeah, on you. Well, I, this, this might be covered in prison code, but it was it was the question was why why get over. CVS. I'm happy to answer that. It's very quick. CVS is 15 or 20 years old. The Drupal community currently uses it, but the Drupal community as a whole is moving towards Git. So that was my first choice personally. And it's also why we produced a Git with Drupal 7 uh, workshop and code sprint in June. Mm -hmm. uh, the video for that is also online. Just do a web search for Git with Drupal 7 and you'll, you'll, mm -hmm. you'll find it. Actually, Git with Drupal. It's yeah. the cer top search result. And uh, yeah, um, it the, the GIT. Yeah, mm -hmm. the, the the majority of the community is using it. And, and then the other half of my question, this is sort of the answer to one of the one of the slides where you do all of the tools more. I suppose you're not going to be, be archiving the the core Drupal stuff that you can download. Actually, we do. Yeah, we do. Yeah, um, very quickly we. We do everything but the .hd access and the uh, the settings.php files and the files directory. Keep in mind, anytime you work on a project that's going to be larger than you know a couple modules, a couple contrib modules, um, updates to Drupal core can have deep ramifications in the rest of your site, and everything needs to be tested. So yes, version control Drupal core as well, because if you have to roll back after updating core. You're gonna hope you, mm -hmm. you have a way to do that. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, and we use Pressflow on all of the campsites, even the internet, which uses Atrium, Open Atrium. We replace Drupal Core with Pressflow, so everything runs faster on our hardware. Who 
doesn't know what Presto is? Uh, Presto is a it's an alternative. It's a derivative of Drupal, and it has many high performance uh, modifications. And if you're using PHP 5.2 or later on your website, then just consider using Presto. It, it, you'll, it'll make your site run a lot faster. It is. It's by the same people that are on the administration and infrastructure teams on Drupal.org. It's, it is Drupal, it's just got stuff, it's got corrupt pulled out and a few things added in. Yeah. A lot of the high performance things in Drupal 7 have been rewritten, they've been backported to Drupal 6. If you're just learning, however, if this, this is something new to you, uh, I'd recommend sticking with Drupal Core for a while because if you need to go into the um, forums to find help, that that help is going to more likely come up uh, with answers relating to Drupal Core. Um, so once you're comfortable and you no longer rely heavily on the forums, then moving over to something like Pressflow is a really good idea because there are alternatives out there that, that um, and it depends on what you're using Drupal for also. Um, it's a case by, if you're going to use a, a derivative, just think a little bit about why you're using that derivative and if it's the derivative that makes sense for you. Um, Good advice. Any other questions? Where does the name Git come from? <laughs> <laughs> I think Linus Torvalds would be the best person to ask that question. <laughs> he answered this on the, the, uh, the Linux kernel mailing list. Um, I think he was called a, a Git. And he liked that, so he. <laughs> I, I I'm paraphrasing, but I, I think what happened was he the, the 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 word stuck with him, and so he wanted to he wanted to reappropriate it. He owned it. It's, it's yes. slang. It, it is. It. Yeah. So it's it's a Britishism. Oh, yeah. A git is someone that's not very smart. <laughs> the problem is this is West Coast uh, Drupal. If you're on the East Coast, you say get over here. That's right. That, that's, that's why we called the, the event in June Git with Drupal 7. <laughs> because it was also a code sprint, so we could help get Drupal 7 released sooner. <laughs> Any other questions? Well, who's thinking of actually getting involved with us on this project? Fantastic. All right. Make sure you yeah. see me so that we can set you up. Or email me. Here, email. Uh, can you pull up... Uh, Rain at sunrainproductions.com. How do I pull that up? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Rowing? Rain, not rolling. Uh, I can't type. Uh. Rain at sunrainproductions.com. Do you have Quicksilver out here? I don't think I do. I should. Mm. No, I don't. Okay. Rain. Yes. Yes, that is a that is a common um thing that I am called because my last name is very close to bro or it's very close to bro. So. Yes. So email me and I will get you hooked up and after which you will then be talking with Christophana. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks all for coming. Uh, is anyone here interested in going to the, the uh, version control uh, discussion? All right. Um, we'll, we'll head over there together. It's a new room. I don't even know where it is. It's right across. Um, yeah. Oh, you're, we're going with Mike, actually. Hopefully a lot of you are staying for Ashok's presentation. However, if you are new or if you have big, big questions and you're not staying for Ashok's presentation, Doug Van is in the sponsor room right now at the Drupal Chicks table doing a Q&A for the next hour. And it's an open Q&A. Whatever questions you have, Any place I use that hopefully he can oh, answer them. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, what's your talk? Moderating content. Oh, right, in right. Drupal. Moderating content in Drupal. It was supposed to be the first session of the camp, and now it's the last. Yes. <laughs> and he's awesome. So if you're not going to either of these two, you should definitely stay here. I don't know how the here. presentation will be, but we are talking about.